Hey, yes. How you doing, guys? Um, Jason Cameron here. Um, it's my second video um, on Wabi, and I'm going to take a look at this um, as an investor and sort of share my opinion uh, from my analysis um, from it. Um, so, what I kind of look at um, in a project, one, if I can understand it, um, off the uh, website straight away and get to know what uh, get to know what it's like. I don't like to invest in projects I don't understand. Um, I want to understand exactly what I'm buying. So if it fails, I kind of understand like what failed and um, and not really like not understand something that failed. If that makes sense. So so um so that's what I get with Wabi first. Um, secondly, I look for like um if there's a real use case for this for the project um do they have a product do they have customers and this is what wabi has i mean from the problem they're trying to solve is like really big um uh it's again the the, the market's effectively worth um close to 500 billion according to their website and um and it's a real problem i mean i remember my friend's telling me about um like plastic rice coming out of china um and so it was a big thing especially over here in the uk there was tons of articles out there and uh, my barber showed me a um a video of a um, of a guy that was cooking fish and he picked up the fish out of the pan there was some water in it and he went like this and he just squeezed it and water came out like it was a sponge. And I was just like, wow. So, counterfeit products, counterfeit food, especially in the situation of baby formula that I was saying, like fake baby formula, that's just ridiculous. Like, that's mad. And um, so, the problem is big. And... Um, is a big problem to solve. It's a real problem to solve. So this product has a real use case. Um, I like the fact that it's a currency um, in its own sort of little ecosystem. And um, and and that ticks a lot of major boxes. Whenever a project has a product out and has customers, people actually or um, already lined up, already already using the project. That um then that really gets my attention. That's what Wabi has straight away. Um, so before I get into anything else, that's kind of what I, I like to look for. Before I spend time on a, on a project, um, I want to understand, I want to see if it's actually like a real use case for the product. Uh, but if they've got customers actually prove that. Um, and, um, and, that's, and, 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 and that's kind of, where I go from here so we kind of established that with Wabi now and if we have a look at their um, their team um, so can the team execute so we have this dude um, uh, Alexander so um, let's check this guy out to see kind of where he where he stands um, so co-founder at Wabi, so he claims McKinsey and Co. Consultant, sales director, leading infant producer. So Wabi. So um, strategic strategy director, sales director, leading global baby food company now. Um, what concerns me, he hasn't actually put the brand there. Um, it could be for legal reasons, I don't know. But the fact that they've got customers and stuff, um, that kind of settles my nerves a little bit there. Uh, but that, that, that does concern me a little bit that he's not there. Um, so, he, so he was there for about a year. Two years being an independent advisor. Uh, in batteries and chemicals and real estate. Cool. So he's had a company before. 
fundraising platform, startup products in China. Cool. So yeah, for about 11 months and it's gonna sell at McKinley for looks like four years. Cool, so you, you can kind of see that um, this guy's got some of the entrepreneurial gene to him. He's, he's started a few, started a few, he's not saying they've been successful, but just given the level of time he's done it before. Um, he started up a few things before he did Wabi, but his, his, his longest tenure was um, at McKinley Company. Let's see how big McKinley Company is. And as we can see, it is um, massive. So if you're the consultant there, so obviously it um it advises people to have advises people to maximise their businesses from a really reputable company. So, so this is a solid guy. So they've been doing what they've been doing for over four years, which is good experience. Had a fair of a year, uh, which helped develop a network for and understanding for the baby food stuff, which I guess is is it is a good easy place to start, which is good and obviously um he's got the experience of um of advising large companies. So Alexander looks like a solid guy to be um good experience. I think with this team as a whole, they've got they're really well experienced simply because they've been doing this for four years. Um so that puts them way ahead. So they kind of know their business a bit inside out a little bit. So, but we'll still look at these guys just to verify their claims. Um, even though LinkedIn is, wouldn't necessarily be law in a sense. So, again, he's been with uh, uh, sort of the, the Wabi guys for, did, he's been doing Wabi for four years as well. Um, independent advisor, leading FMCG manufacturer on the turnaround strategy in the Russian market. Okay, cool. Here you go. Oh, it's getting late out here. Um, associate consultant at Bain Company for two years. So, how big are these guys? Okay, it's 10,000 employees, so get a large company. So they've both been involved in business consulting. <clears throat> Did that for two years. Cool. Solomon for LP, Amina, Energy and Environmental in China. Okay, it's not a massive company. Has over 100 full time employees in a network of 2,000 technicians working in diverse locations around the globe. Okay. So it's not, it's not, it's not a super small company. Well, it's not a super large one, but it's a solid company there. Cool. Okay, so what, okay, what we're looking for here is just experience level relevant to the industry that you're in, but he knows the Chinese market. He knows the Russian market. So he has some international dealings, but again, he's been doing what he's doing for four, over four years, which is, um, which is a plus in my book. So have a look at Kitty. Just have a look at our marketing experience, being a marketing head. So she's been with Wabi for less than a year. She was an advisor for Guo Faro in China for a year. So she advised on brand marketing with floor design, cool. Um, okay. So business consultant MBA project for less than a year. Okay, so for a sound that was a placement. Uh, Johnson and Johnson for an MBA. We're still given relevant experience, um, I guess, but 
it's not the same as, as effectively being given a role I um, mean Johnson and Johnson as a blocker here but even before that though she's worked for these guys in marketing so let's just have a look This is the quality of these companies. Okay, so Bank A Real Estate, property developer. It's not industry experience, but it's role experience. Um, the RS components. So these guys are pretty, pretty big as well. Electrical manufacturing. Okay, so cool. Then she's the manager of corporate communications is a it's a leading global public relations and communications firm that builds sustains strong corporate brand reputations. Cool. How big is these guys? Okay, so quite a large company as well. Okay, so from the looks of it, she's got a really strong marketing background. So <clears throat> she's done one year hold on just look at this Tex 100 is a global marketing communications agency that specializes in the technology sector she spent three years there okay how many guys have you got okay another hundred employees cool so yeah she's got a really strong marketing experience she's a um, I'll call her a bad girl because she's um, three years experience, four, eight, less than a year. So let's call that a year together, nine, nine years experience, close to 10 years experience in marketing from some quality firms. She's a really strong marketing head, um, really, really good. Really, really good person to have on the team, in my um, in my opinion. So their their marketing side is pretty strong. I like that. Um, cool. So they they're technology guys. They're blockchain lead. Uh, cool. So they've been there for about three months. Which is understandable because <clears throat> they had launched the ICO in about July, so for that money, they've been able to bring him on. So they developed an app for these guys. Okay, so Italy's, Italki is a community marketplace that connects language learners with language teachers around the world for online lessons. Okay. Online online learning. Seven hundred employees on LinkedIn. So why does it say fifty one two hundred employees? Maybe that's old. That's old data. Cool. Uh, dude. Alibaba, AliExpress, wireless engineer, Android software developer, Android software developer, maintenance. Where's this guy's ah, Python? I was saying, bro, where's your blockchain um, experience? Two thousand eight. Seven employees. Okay, so Transaz Vision is lead the way, create an ecosystem of harmonized, integrated solutions, and safety navigation and ship operations. Cool. True to his vision, Transas has introduced CSIS. Okay. So he's developed this software. He's not developing this software, but he's been involved in developing that software. So. I want to call him a blockchain architect. Simply given his background, but depending on what blockchain platform they use, 
then he can be really useful. Yeah, he's got good software development experience, really strong work for Alibaba, AliExpress. Um, these guys are not small, Talki, open language. Look at this, small. So, one, two, three, four years experience. I want to say four years as a developer, but um, he's been developing for ages, hasn't he? One, three, six, seven, eight, ten years as a developer. So, so yeah, he's well versed in um, development. So, I think if if they select the um, obviously the right blockchain for the project, but also the right blockchain that they have the personnel to. Um, to to use and um then I think he'll be the right guy. So this dude Dimitri is their blockchain lead. So this guy what's Rocket ICO? He's involved in Rocket ICO. Okay, centralized center of startups. Okay, so he's involved in another ICO, another blockchain project. Cool. That's cool. My development is a solution for the mid, mid sized and large company specializes in software development, customization, advanced web and mobile application e commerce. There for 10 months. IT consultant. To radiation instruments and okay, these guys even no, nope. they're not there. Can't find them on LinkedIn, so uh, <clears throat> don't know the quality of that company. Mm. You guys, co-founder outstaffing me. Cool. So IT, there for three years, there for ten months, that's more of a salesman. Uh, be yeah, be the techie and then go to a salesman, yeah, that's I'm not really surprised there for ten months, mate. Um cool, so from what I see here. Well, if he's a co-founder and he's a salesman here, there's a bit of a blend between the sales and development um, background. From what I see here, just his experience in another ICO blockchain project probably lends that he has a strong interest in it, which probably uh, we're not fully convinced with him, to be honest. Um, but I've um, got limited information here just on LinkedIn. I'm struggling to see the connection with him there. But their main guy anyway. Um, could be right. So if I Okay, let's have a look at this guy quickly. Just to give you a bit more confidence on his IT IT side. So the software development team lead at Wallaby. So again, he works at Rocket ICO. Bruv, where's your credentials? Where are they gone? What are you saying? IT solution architect with over 15 years of IT experience. Blockchain and crypto economic specialist. Former founder CTO at Mind Development. Graduate at Bolara State. Mind Development, is that where Dimitri worked? It was so ten months. Is that that's interesting? So these guys know each other. Cool. And they're both into rocket. And they're both into. All right. Again, I mean, I'm struggling to make the connection. I'm a bit frustrated because there's limited information on LinkedIn, but I have just the inkling that their uh, backgrounds are a bit deeper than what LinkedIn suggests just based on their connections and stuff but from what I see anyway sort of um, 
I wouldn't say this team is world class, um, but I'll say he's experienced given the fact that they've been doing, especially the the, the league I do and doing for a while, and they've got the network um, there in place. Um, and I think if they just pick the right um, resources in, t- in terms of blockchain and stuff, they should they should be fine. Um, so yeah, I mean it's a solid team. I wouldn't say it's world class, but it's a solid team because they've got good experience, uh, very good experience in the key areas. Um, in my opinion, the advisors are pretty strong. Um, if you ask me, um, which adds a bit more weight to the team, but not loads. But um, but yeah, it's not world class, but but a solid team. Um, they've got they've got marketing cover. The fact that they they they're getting into stores. Um, tells me that their, their marketing side is strong. Their marketing uh, um, personnel there is pretty strong background as well. She says I'm not the right person to, for the job, in my opinion. Um, the tech's pretty good. Um, uh, I, I look at three categories, whether it's like a revolutionary, unique, or standard. And given the fact that they have the counterfeit tag that's sort of tamper proof and all the work that's gone into it. And the YAP as well, um, I've actually classed their tech as revolutionary. Um, legal side, um, they don't have any legal personnel there, but I would say it's solid given the fact that it took a bit more time to to assess how they would um, uh, organise themselves. We need a project in China with the ICO regulations and, um, and then having to run the ICO and how, and having, how they go into sort out the logistics of the um, the token mechanics in, in full operation. So how's it going to be traded? How's it going to be used to act without sort of conflict of of chi- of of of, um, of interest with with China's regulation? So so that tells me that they have some sort of legal framework there. Uh, even though they don't have a, a described person on their website, uh, but something there is better than none. Um, I guess their governance is pretty simple. Um, nothing sort of um, like um, self-sustaining there. So if anything, if anything happens to these guys, uh, Alexander and Yaz and their projects tanked, basically. So that's the risk factor that I kind of see. Um, what else do I look for? Um, or did I did I did I look into? Um, the community, right? So, when it comes to community, I don't. I think I don't necessarily look at their social media. So, for example, mm-hmm. if you look at their Twitter um, followers, um, twelve hundred not a lot. Twelve hundred is not a lot at all. Um, Telegram. I'm not going to go into Telegram, it's just a bit confusing, but their social media follow isn't huge, um, and I don't think I really see why that's, because it's a pretty low-key ICO, um, and, um, but, like I said before, to, the community is more than just their social media follow, in my opinion, it's their team, the size of the development team, um, it's their network, um, so the fact that these guys have experience in baby products, I think that's given them an advantage in getting access into the baby foods market um, with the launch of their products, um, which is effectively a strong community. Um, in my opinion, um, I think most of these guys have experience in working in China. Um, I think the their advisors are really strong. So the networks that these guys would have to help um, the team. So I think um, the community is pretty solid and um, it's pretty strong, which, which sort of works in their potential. Uh, so from the grand scheme, so how did this, so how did this um, ICO sort of grade? Um, so as a whole, I have a grade ICOs A, B or C. Um, so this ICO, if you've got a B, it's a pretty solid B. Um, 
if I um if I do a review like this on on um on my channel, um, it's sort of sort of safe to um to sort of have the um the idea that yeah um i'm either invested going to be invested or have some sort, of, some sort of vested interest in this project so um i'm going to be invested in this project just for a number of reasons um one it kind of fits into my, my, my profile or my thesis that it's a coin a uh, currency rather um, currency or platform that's kind of what i look at um but this is a currency um they have customers and a user base so their their idea is proven um the demand is proven um the fact that they solve a problem is proven the fact that they have customers and their token matrix is pretty attractive as well um it's a really low market cap in the grand scheme of things nowadays 10 million um plus even you call it 11 million um for the pre-sale as a total market cap um it's pretty attractive um so where we could go from here who knows i mean if you look at similar projects have sort of loyalty based currency based projects like um like metal or anything like that i'm not saying that one is going to perform like they are i'm just saying what's the upside so what's the upside of a project like this um going from 10 million there's a huge upside in my opinion because they already got usage uh um so the adoption of of the coin should be pretty straightforward um the downside is obviously I, is i lose the money that i invested but the upside could be better from 10 million where could where could it go um uh so that will be really interesting to see um as i uh, i mean this channel is all about looking for that project that will do the projects that will do like 100x and um uh, and could this do it um i don't know i don't know if we could do it but the potential to get there um is pretty it's pretty huge uh, because they haven't overpriced their um their ico and it's a working product already and then so as far as most projects are they're miles ahead um and that's affecting my opinion so so yeah i'll, I'll be um i'll be invested in this ico um uh, and it was given a grade B, so as I said before, so so that's my verdict, guys. And in terms of 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 um, of my concerns, though, um, which I I should have shared, is that um, in this uh, sort of workflow, as I said before, the fact that merchants can sell on the exchange, um, if we've got half of the supply potentially being dripped in here i don't know over what time period they would expect this 50 million to be used up but there's a chance here that merchants can dump their um their coins on the exchange for cash um, and if their sales are strong then they just rely on the um the subsidiary from the escrow um so that could affect the price my big concern was in the pre pre ICO. There's like a massive discount. So the pre ICO price was three cents, and the ICO price is looking anywhere between fifteen to twenty five cents. That is like a five to eight and a half x or eight eight nine x. Um, like return before it's even on the exchange that is huge and if you saw my last video you know it's that icos are getting most icos are getting dumped on recently because all of these pre-sell um private sell uh bonuses and stuff that um that are available to um to sometimes a selected few to sometimes to those that are uh, big investors the the discounts um it's it's a quick flip you get in you flip on on launch day and the and the price tanks and so that kind of even I mean they didn't raise lots of money they only raised about three hundred grand or four or even a million I think anywhere and so it's just call it a million so ten percent of the total supply um it's not loads it's not loads of money that's gonna sort of um come in and, and make a massive dent but it could make a dent um if if guys make five x right at the gate 
um, 8x, 10x right again, they're going to want to take some profit and that will impact the price uh, with the guys that are getting on the public ICO holding the bag. So that was that. That's that's a major concern of mine. And, and what I like about Wabi is that they've continually listened to the community because first they had a auction type um, bidding system type ICO idea, which the community didn't like. Um, then they changed to a whitelist. And um, secondly, the community was moaning about this massive, that's like 500% discount. And um, that's unheard of. No one else is doing that. Uh, like I don't even like 30% discount. And they gave him 500% discount. So, so um, and I'm a bit sour about that because I, I missed out on the pre ICO. I tried to get in and my transaction didn't make it in time because it just got flooded. And um, so yeah, I'm a bit upset about that. So, so but it's life. It's it's life. It's crypto. Just get on with it. Um, but but also that's, that's obviously a concern. You don't want to you don't want to lose like four fifths of your investment right at the gate. Um, so what they actually responded with is that any, anyone that's in the pre ICO, they've got two options. They could either lock up their coins for three to six months or the one bigger guys will buy it buy it off them at the ICO price prior to the ICO which gives the coin time to gain traction and market and true market value before the pre ICO guys start coming into the market um, with their coins which I think is is a really uh, respectful thing to do um, so I, I really res take my hats off and respect the Wabi guys for listening to the community and making that kind of decision. So, so my other concern is that with um, with their whole dancing around the Chinese regulations and how they set up two organisations uh, to help uh, distinguish between uh, what's traded and what's not. Um, <clears throat> my concern is that China looking at it and be like. You gotta take the mic. We know what you're doing. Shut down, and um, and it kind of takes the legs off the whole project. Um, that's a possibility. Um, it is a concern of mine because China's quite hot at the moment, and how they're gonna get traction in China with all this stuff going on. Hopefully, the idea works, um, but you never know. Um, the other thing I'm concerned about is if they're able to successfully integrate onto the blockchain. They haven't decided what blockchain they're going to use yet. We don't have a time frame for that. So we don't really know what's going to happen there. We know what is going to happen. We don't know what it's going to be look like, what it's going to look like or when it's going to be. So that is a, um, a concern of mine. So what, what, what I would so what I would say so given all those factors, I mean it's the risks of the project. So those few things can make this project go bitterly wrong, but uh, but it could go really right and uh, and it could and it could go our way as an investor. So, but um, having that that said, um, I'm still quite bullish on this project um, and I will be investing. It got solid grade. Um, but those are the kind of risks that I see um, anyway. But let me know what you think, guys. Um, that's Wabi. Um, if you like this video, you found it helpful, um, give it a thumbs up. Tap that thumbs up button. Tap that like button. Tap that subscribe button. Um, if you've got friends and family who mm -hmm. like to learn more about investing in cryptocurrency, then um, forward my video to them. And uh, for more sort of tips and information, um, all the stuff that I look at, um, ICOs and... Um, um, a lot of things that I, I, I spot out there then subscribe to my newsletter um, in the link below um, and thanks for watching guys cheers take care